In this Wilson Builds guide, we're going to be covering a ranger build that focuses on the use of arrows and ice to freeze and destroy enemies from range. Wilson has a complex passive skill tree, Gate of Fates, that can be difficult to figure out, and many mechanics are not always easy to min-max. In this build guide, I'll explain how to get the most from this build, so if you've been struggling to find a good ranger build, then this guide is for you. The White Arrow build uses a combination of passives that allow you to fire multiple projectiles that bounce off your targets, hitting many others at the same time. Additionally, it adds frost damage to your attacks, allowing you to freeze enemies, preventing them from taking action all while you range them down with prejudice. This helps prevent damage to you at the same time as you gain increased damage from not taking any to yourself. This Wilson build also takes advantage of high critical damage and critical chance, and the reason for this is that it is currently the most effective way to increase damage. As far as I know, all percentage damage modifiers are currently additive in Wilson, meaning that they all add together before they are calculated against the base value of a skill or weapon. This makes them much less effective than they appear. However, critical damage is multiplied against these modifiers, making it much more effective. This requires a high critical chance, though, to take advantage of, which is why this build focuses on it. Since this build depends heavily on critical chance to pump out damage, most if not all points will be placed into Ferocity. This will give you the highest critical chance possible and give you the most per damage point spent, 0.5%, because it will be your primary attribute. Later on the game, past level 50 or so, consider pumping Wisdom for increased chance of freezing enemies, because diminishing returns will be very bad at this point on critical chance. You might be tempted to take agility for attack speed with this build, but you'll find that you attack plenty fast enough so should not be concerned with it. There are many passes we pick up that boost attack speed and bows don't attack slowly at all by default. Stick to ferocity for best results. In this section we'll take a look at what skills should be on your skill bar to make this build work. There is really only one must-have skill for this build, giving you a lot of freedom and flexibility, but since we have a huge focus on frost, I have included the ones that synergize the best with this damage type. Bow Shots this is your default attack with a bow and is the only way you can cause projectiles to bounce, so you'll be using this one a lot. It also builds Rage, which you'll need to cast your other skills, so you'll open with this one generally, and you'll find it will carry you a good amount of the way through the game once the build starts coming together. Because of the skill Arshion's teachings, it will fire two arrows at once by default, really helping to spread the damage out and freeze enemies. Stings of Quirion. This skill is much more useful early on in the game than it is later and will help you deal with packs of enemies during Act 1. You can convert it to frost damage by taking the white field arrowhead skill modifier, and you should look to take pulmonary strike for increased critical chance and cruel songbird for increased critical damage as well. Wailing arrows. This skill is very situational and is great when you're overwhelmed and have to constantly move. Shoot it up and AoE an area while you run around, rinse and repeat. Additionally, if you take the skill modifier black cloud, you can take better advantage of your critical damage, resulting in huge AoE damage. Be sure to take the eagle eye and broadhead passives for increased critical chance and damage. Phantom blades. This skill will fire two projectiles once you gain the Archeon's Teachings passive, does massive damage, and is a must-have. You can convert it to do Frost Damage to take advantage of the Frostbite passive by taking the Bladed Blizzard skill modifier. You'll also want Butterfly's Eye and Gutting Wheel to increase critical chance and critical damage, and Gliding Friction to leave a trail of frost on the ground that does damage over time. Death Gazer Railgun. This ability is again situational, but it does a ton of damage if you fire it at max charge. You can crit for over 15k at level 40 with this skill and this build, and it can one-shot many mini-bosses and elites. Just make sure you have the spacing to use it properly because it's not worth using if you can't max it out. Frostbitten Salute will convert this to Frost Damage, which synergizes nicely, and one simple shot will give you plus 100% critical damage, which is a lot. Inflexible Blast and Promised Bullet are also exceptionally good, so play around with these and see which you like best. Figuring out how to align your Gate of Fates is one of, if not the hardest part of making a build in Wolzen and generally takes a respec or two before gotten right. In this section, I want to show you how I've set this up for maximum performance. Sentinel. An obvious choice for any ranged character, you'll make your way through here picking up refined technique and precise strikes for extra projectile damage, attack damage, and critical chance. Be sure to grab Backline Raider as well before heading to Ranger for increased attack speed since you'll be lacking points here. Later on in the game, you'll want to pick up Pinch Runner and the passives near it for boss fights. Ranger. You'll be spending a lot of time in this tree picking up tons of passive skills. There's lots to love here. Grab Shoot to Kill and make your way up to Arshion's Teachings to get your extra projectile ASAP, making sure to grab Bullseye. Then grab Deadly Aim, Swiftness, and Swift Death. Safe from Afar is one of the largest damage increases you can get that is not critical based, so you'll want to make sure you pick this up as well. Persistent Hunting and Overwhelming Barrage are also good, so grab them as well. You'll want nearly this whole tree. White Arrow. White Arrow is next up, and you'll be looking to get to Wintry Hail as quickly as possible, as this allows your projectiles to bounce. 
You cannot have pierce on them for this to happen, which you will have, but all this does is allow your arrows to pierce before bouncing, and because you'll be picking up Hungry Stalactite, eventually those projectiles that do pierce will have increased damage before they bounce. Make sure to grab Ice Shell Wake and Frostbite for some more critical damage and frost damage, and pick up Acute Tracking for even further damage. Soldier. Up next is Soldier, and this might seem like an odd choice for a ranged build, but it's one of the few trees that contains critical damage in its passives, so we quickly pick up Heavy Blows and Zealous Might. Then we head over through Scholar into Assassin. Assassin. Once an Assassin, you'll want to head for Merciless Lethality immediately. This will give you a whopping plus 100% critical damage in exchange for minus 30% damage on non-crits. That might seem like an extreme trade-off, but remember minus 30% is additive and critical damage multiplies against your final damage value. This is a huge damage boost on critical hits immediately. We take this later in the game when our critical chance is higher so that we don't nerf our damage early on. Take Slipping Shadow later on in the game when you find that you need to dodge more. Alistair. Alistair is our last stop, and here we get some more critical chance in the form of Pulse Control and Shock Invasion, and gain some much needed attack speed in Intravenous Neural Cord, Cautious Effort, and Condensator. Grab Static Transferal to increase your damage from all basic attacks you'll be doing. In this section we'll be covering the type of equipment that you want for the White Arrow build. The first thing you'll want is a bow that ideally has frost damage on it, and some offensive 1 sockets. If it doesn't have these sockets but you have a bow you really like, you can re-roll the sockets at Xyanifer Stark for nearly no gold, so be sure to do it. Offensive 1 slots will allow you to drop diamonds into your bow, adding additional frost damage. You need frost damage to have any chance to freeze enemies, so make sure you have it and don't switch bows unless it has frost or you can add frost. Armor-wise, you want to look for things that increase critical damage first. This is the most important stat here, so sacrifice other things for that. Look for flat damage increases like plus 10 frost damage on attack on accessories. You want to make sure it's on attack and not spellcast. Then look for critical chance or plus percentage elemental damage. Material damage is not bad after this, but some skills will be frost variants, making it less useful. Attack speed is last. Final tips. Remember to level up skills using your primordial affinity at Demetra. Players have a tendency to hold on to it and not do anything with it when they could be using it to unlock extra skill modifier points for their skills, and skills only get stronger and stronger, so level it up manually when you have extra primordial affinity. Be careful when picking skill modifiers for your skills to not take a damage type that isn't frost because it will overwrite the freeze chance with the status ailment of that damage type. For example, if you take Flames of Envy on Wailing Arrows, it cannot freeze but will burn enemies instead. It may do increased damage, but it will no longer crowd control. Keep this in mind and decide whether it's worth the trade-off. Make sure to unsocket gems from your old weapons and armor before selling them. You'll want the diamonds and amethyst for frost damage and increased critical damage. These are not always easy to find, so there's no point in wasting them. Better to lose a bit of gold than to farm for an hour to get one. Lastly, this is a very offensive build that counts on the freeze ailment to prevent you from taking damage. If you can out-damage your enemies, then you don't have to worry about being hit. When it comes to boss fights, you will need to roll dodge to avoid damage, which is why we take passives like Pinch Runner and Slipping Shadow later on to make this easier. This is an all-or-nothing glass cannon build, so go all out on damage and roll when you need to. Be sure to check out our other Wolson Lords of Mayhem guides and stay tuned for more builds, including beginner and endgame builds such as the Wolson Mage build Oracle of Flames and the Stasis Knight.